my name is, is Joel May, and I'm the Assistant Registrar for Student Financial Support here at the University of Calgary. Um, I will be walking through a little bit of a presentation today, um, and we'll be able to provide answers to any questions that you may have. Um, while I'm going through uh, the presentation, I'll turn my camera off. Um, you'll only be able to see me, and you'll be able to see the slides. Um, so um, always, you can be active in the chat. Um, you, I, I won't get to it right away, but I'll, I have some breaks set up in my presentation where I'll start uh, responding to some of the questions that you have. Um, some of the information um, will be provided later, so um, you don't want to really jump ahead. I might not answer the question um, because I have it later in one of the slides. So um, I'll just I'll just start now, um, and uh, yeah. So this presentation is really about financial aid, you Calgary and you. Um, so just kind of giving you a quick overview of funding options that are available for you as a University of Calgary student um, for this fall. So what we're gonna look at today is we'll, we'll talk about kind of what it'll cost so you can have a better understanding of what, what you're gonna have to pay for in your first year, and then give you some options on how you can pay for it. So. Um, we'll touch on student loans, um, we'll touch on award scholarships and bursaries, RESPs, and then lastly, I'm going to really um, discuss things that make you uh, better with your money as you progress through your, your university career, um, and that's a program that we have here at the university called Money Smart. So... Hopefully you've looked into this, or, or maybe it might have been your parents who looked into this, but, it, but it's really important to know uh, what it's going to cost for your education. Um, it, it varies based on your program and based on if you're domestic or international. Um, this presentation is mainly for domestic students, so hopefully um, you, most of the, most of the um, individuals on this webinar are from Canada or are permanent residents or protected persons in Canada because um, that's what the main focus of this presentation will be. But when you look at what it's going to cost you, so it really depends on what program you're in. Um, those of you who are in the Haskane School of Business or the Schulich School of Engineering, so if you're taking commerce or if you're taking engineering, your fees are a little bit more than um, those who are not, um, so those of you who are in arts or science or kinesiology or nursing, um, for those are just examples, um, your fees are a little bit less. So you'll have your tuition fees, but then there's general fees on top of that. And in your general fees, that includes your health and dental, um, that includes um, your student services fees, that includes your athletic fees, your recreation fees, um, as well as your UPASS fees. So um, when we are back on campus, um, hopefully the pandemic's done by this fall or is things start to get back to normal for this fall, um, every, every student is, is uh, provided a universal transit pass, so you can take the train or the bus all over the city um, and it's built into your fees. Um, then you also have to look at what books will cost you and books range from anywhere, for a term, anywhere from uh, 500 to 1500 depending on what program you're in um, then you you have to look at your living arrangements so if you're living away from home um, really your expenses could be more um, what what I show on this page is really what's what it is if you're going to live at residence uh, on campus um, so there's a meal plan as well as your average residence cost it can be less expensive if you live off campus but it's good for you to, to be aware that your expenses um, per year could, could be around $20,000 to $27,000. So you just have to be prepared for that and understand that going to university is not the least expensive thing in the, in the world. And um, any support financially that you can, you can get, it's a, it's a benefit to you going forward. So... The, the costs are quite high, but it seems daunting, but there is funding available. Um, before I go any further, I'll just see if there's any questions. I don't see any questions, but I'm just, before I start to talk about student loans in Canada, I just wanted to have a quick poll. Um, let me just see. Just give me one second.
I'm just going to publish a poll on where people are from. So if you could just respond um, which province you're from. And if you're not from a specific province, just put it in the chat so I understand where um, most of our, our, our viewers are from today. Okay, I'm just going to end the poll. I see the majority of listeners and, and viewers are from Alberta, but we have some from Ontario, some from Manitoba, uh, some from Saskatchewan as well, um, but majority uh, from Alberta. Uh, before I go on, there's a couple, couple questions in the chat. Uh, one question is, are general fees the same for undergraduate and graduate students? Uh, no, they aren't. They're a little bit different. Um, there's a different student association for undergraduate and graduate, and um, the fee the, the fee structure is, is completely different. I was only showing what was for undergraduate, so if you're looking at graduate programs, um, it would be different than that. Um, and then the question about would it cost double for double majors? No. Um, <laughs> double majors, really the fees are, are based on how many courses you're taking. So what I showed you is a typical uh, undergraduate enrollment. So that's five courses per term, fall and winter. Um, so if you're doing a double major, normally that, that, that takes a little bit longer. Um, so um, just so you're aware. Um, another question before I move on, I'll just, this will be the last question I take and then I'll, then I'll move on. It, it this is recorded. Um, it will be recorded and it, um, the link for everyone who registered will be shared. Um, we also post any of these webinars like this on our, our Utah YouTube channel as well. And that's choose.ucalgary. Uh, and that's on YouTube. So um, you can definitely rewatch this after the fact. <clears throat> so with student loans, um, student loans at the University of Calgary are administered by my team, which is uh, student financial support. Uh, my team facilitates the administration of government student loan funding for Canadian citizens, permanent residents, um, and international students from the United States of America. So if you're a U.S. student, we, we do have U.S. funding available, um, but the majority is, is Canada, um, across Canada, every single province, territory, um, we help administer that. Um, my team also looks after all awards, scholarships, uh, for all undergraduate and professional faculty students, and then all bursaries for the entire campus. So uh, my team's small, but it's mighty, and uh, we really help um, help students succeed by by helping them ensure that they have funding. Um, so when it comes to student loans, uh, to determine eligibility for financial aid, as I said before, um, to be eligible for a student loan in Canada, you have to be a Canadian citizen, permanent resident, or protected persons. Um, you need to be in a, enrolled in an accredited post-secondary institution. Um, University of Calgary is a public post-secondary institution, so it's naturally accredited. Um, and then you have to just demonstrate financial need. And the easy way, easiest way to determine your financial need is look at your costs and then minus your resources. And then if you actually have a balance there, that means you have a need. So if your costs outweigh your resources, you have need. Um, for Alberta students, um, the easiest place to find out about student loans is uh, just go studentaid.alberta.ca. I know the majority of you have, have Googled um, multiple things in your life. That it's so easy just to, to Google student loans, Alberta, student loans, BC, student loans, Manitoba, uh, student loans, Ontario, student loans, Saskatchewan. It's really easy to find uh, the websites. The websites are very intuitive and they explain everything. They have resources for, for students. I'll, I'll show a few of the websites a little bit later, but um, they're, quite, they're quite good uh, that way. Um, we do always give the resource of for out of province uh, students. It's canlearn.ca, and that's really the federal site for it because all um, 
all student loans are integrated with with federal student loans. Um, there's a question in there about when applications open. I'll I'll let you know. That's a little bit later. Um, and just so you know, if if you're not looking at being a full time student, um, there are part time loans that are available as well. So I'm going to talk about financial aid, and I'll probably use the term student loans more than anything else. But that's not all that there is. So um, when you apply for for student aid from from your province, um, you'll be assessed for for both loans and grants. So loans are just that. So loans must be repaid. Loans um, there's both a federal and a provincial portion of loans. Um, when you when you actually apply for financial aid, they'll evaluate you based on that, and then you'll get a breakdown of what your federal piece will be and then your provincial loan will be. Um, it's based on financial need. And remember, when you complete your studies, um, six months after you complete, you'll have to start repaying um, your loan. Then there's grants. So there's uh, both federal and provincial grants. They're based on financial need and other criteria, and they do not have to be repaid. Um, there's there's a low income grant that where if your income is a certain threshold, um, you'll get that grant. This year, the, the federal government's doubled that grant. It normally is $3,000 and it was $6,000 this year. Um, there's there's other criteria. There's, there's ones based on if you have dependents. There's ones based on if you have um, any accessibility. So if you have a disability or something, there's grants there as well. Um, and then there's also based on where you live, if you live up in, in Nunavut or um, there's a Northern Living Grant as well that's incorporated. Um, grants are, are awesome and a lot, a lot of students apply for loans just to get the grants. Um, I don't recommend that just in case you don't, but um, you don't have to cash your loan if that's the case. But um, sometimes I, I get questions from, from students. I had one on Instagram today is, would it be better better to apply for a bank loan or uh, a government loan when it comes to student loans. Um, and sorry, hand, I just lost my train of thought. And, and my response was you should always apply for government loans first because there are grants built into it. So even though you might be getting $15,000, if $6,000 is grant, you're really only paying that back $9,000. If you got the same amount from a bank, uh, you'd have to pay back the entire amount. So how to apply? So the majority of the applications uh, launch on uh, it you, as early as June 1st. This year it was a little bit later with, with the pandemic. Um, things were delayed. I know in BC and Alberta, it wasn't until middle of July that they actually launched or beginning of July. So it's a little bit later, but usually applications for fall for the 2021-2022 school year um, will launch usually in June. In Alberta, they shoot for the second week of June, but it can vary based on the province. Um, when you apply, there's certain information that you'll need for your assessment. So you'll need your name, date of birth, citizenship, uh, marital status, contact information. The school information for, for um, every province except Alberta, um, you will need that. So you'll need the school name, you'll need your program, program length, uh, type of degree, your, the dates, and then a, an estimate of the costs. We will normally have to confirm that. So when you apply in BC or if you apply in Ontario for OSAP, um, they'll, we'll actually get a program information form where we have to complete and send back in order to verify what the actual costs are for you. Um, when you submit your application to, you'll have to know what your resources are. So um, what your RESPs are, if you have employment insurance, if you're with Alberta Works, if you're an Indigenous student who has uh, band funding or nation funding, um, if you have any scholarships at that time. Um, and then, then you also have to submit how much you want. So, so you'll always have to indicate um, if you want the the if you want ten thousand dollars, you'll have to indicate that. Or if you leave it blank, it'll just assess you for the full amount. Um, and and remember, with with any financial aid, you'll have to apply each year. So the academic each year requires its own assessment. So if you apply for your first year, you'll have to apply again for your second year. 
Um, I always recommend applying as early as you can. Um, as soon as the application launches in June, that's a good time to, to apply because it takes about four to six weeks for them to process. Uh, um, there was questions about interest-free. While you're continuing your studies, if you're a student loan borrower, as you continue your studies each year, um, you have fall and winter terms. So you're in, in school for eight, eight months usually, and then you have a four month break before you start in the fall again. Um, you'll maintain that interest-free status over that four months. And then when you start up in, in school again, you're either going to be a student loan borrower again, or you can uh, submit a confirmation of enrollment for interest-free status and you'll maintain that interest-free status and not have to pay back your student loan while you continue your studies. Um, it, and it, it's not until you've, um, been out of school for, for a minimum of six months um, in, is when you start have to pay back, paying back and that's when you actually start accruing interest as well. Um, one quick question before I move on to the next page. Um, um, the question is, can you pay off your loans while you're attending school? Yes, you definitely can. Um, you can start paying it whenever you want. Um, if you want to start paying before you're finished, then you definitely can. Um, you would just reach out to your lender, which is uh, your your provincial uh, financial aid uh, office um, or financial aid um, organization, then um, they'll be able to help you with that. Um, one last question before, and I'll, then I'll move on. The average interest rate right now for, if you, when you get a student loan, um, you'll, there'll be a provincial piece as well as a uh, federal piece. Federal interest right now is prime and uh, prime is quite low. Um, right now, interest rates are the lowest they've been in years and years and years. Um, and for if you're Alberta, it's prime plus one, but every province is a little bit different. Um, I'm more of an expert of the federal and, and Alberta, so I can speak to that. Uh, interest rates are quite low. Um, so, so in Alberta, it's prime plus one. And I haven't looked at what the prime rate is right now. It fluctuates all the time, um, but, but it's quite low. I think it might be 3%. Um, it's not really high. So for, for everyone who's on the call or on the Zoom call that's from Alberta, um, they're, you would apply through Alberta Student Aid and the website is just studentaid.alberta.ca. Um, on the left side of your screen here, you'll see um, this is what the main landing page is. There's a nice clean menu. They just redid this website last year. Um, and when you're actually, there's kind of a banner underneath the menu, there's a banner and that'll scroll to different, different items. So um, Alberta Student Aid also has scholarships and awards. And sometimes when those launch, you'll see that information there. So it's always a good resource for Alberta residents to, to go and, and check where, while they're continuing their education. Um, but when you're first time applying, you'll actually just click on, on just down below the banner and it'll say applying first time start here, um, that's where you'll click. There's certain information you'll need to know when you first apply in Alberta. You'll have to know what your Alberta student number is or, but you'll also be able to search and find it as well. Um, it's the same number if you've been a high school student, elementary school student, middle school, uh, junior high school student here in Alberta. It, it's a number that follows you pretty much from when you start in kindergarten all the way till you finish a PhD if you wanted to. Um, it's just a, a way of, of tracking your, your academic progress um, here in Alberta. Um, each province has it. I know BC does. I'm originally from BC and had that, but I also have an Alberta student number. Um, so that's a good thing just to, just to know, or at least know to find it. Um, then I've got a screen capture, a couple screen captures on the, um, or just one, sorry, on, uh, on the left side, or sorry, on the right side of the page. Um, they always show exactly how long the processing time. So if you look at right now, they're processing full-time applications that were received January 20th to the 25th. Um, this number is a lot different in, in the summer because that's when the bulk of the applications come. But you can really, but even before you apply, you can get a rough estimate on, on how long it's gonna take um, for, this, for them to process your application. Um, it also shows part-time applications and re requests for reviews. Uh, requests for reviews are something you do if, if there's an issue. Um, so if you 
apply for a student loan and you don't get as much money as you think you should should be receiving, you can always submit a request for review to, to have it reassessed to see if you uh, can get more money. Um, one thing, when you go to studentaid.alberta.ca, it's good to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page because that's where all the resources are. So it's really important that you kind of understand what resources are available. Um, it gives you kind of tips on, on repaying. Um, there's some, some guidebooks um, that are available there as well. Um, so just a good little point. So if, if anyone on the call is from BC, this is what the Student Aid BC um, site looks like. Um, this is, I, I only gave a few examples. So just Alberta, BC and Saskatchewan. Um, so BC is fairly similar. It actually shows um, their processing time. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's very, it's relatively similar to Alberta, um, but then other, other provinces are a little bit different. So then there's Saskatchewan as well. Um, Saskatchewan, their URL isn't as short. It's a little bit harder to find. So I always just Google it, um, but it's just Saskatchewan student loans. Um, there's a, there's a link down here to the student loan application. It kind of shows a little bit of information. It's a little bit more text heavy, but, um, but it, it works out the same. Um, And then for the rest of the provinces, I, I would Google it. I, I'm sorry if I would have known there was Ontario and Manitoba on here, I would have quickly put that in the presentation because they have good sites as well. Um, Ontario, it's Ontario Student Ass Assistance Program or OSAP. Uh, most people call it OSAP. It's just uh, just the traditional way. Um, Manitoba is really good though too. They have a really good website as well. Um, so make sure you check that out. Um, so, when you apply, so after you, you apply and then what? So um, doesn't matter what province or territory you're from, you will create an account and apply online. All of the applications are online now. Um, the evaluation will take four to six weeks. And once uh, it's evalu evaluated, um, you'll re receive a, a student, what is called a student award letter. So it's a formal letter saying, this is exactly how much of a loan you're going to get, loan and grants. It'll show a breakdown of that. And then with, with every province too, um, you'll also receive a, what's called a master student financial assistance agreement. Um, you'll have to complete that and actually upload it to your portal. Um, it's either, it'll be either your Alberta portal or, or the national portal. Um, then in August, usually if you've applied early enough or as soon as we get the information from, from your, your lender, so for your provincial um, either, either Alberta or any other province, um, we will confirm your enrollment. And one thing that we do that's different than any other institution pretty much across the country is we disperse or we tell the, the provincial and federal governments to disperse all the money to you. So we don't request any money on your behalf to actually pay for your tuition and fees. Um, you will have to pay them all yourself because you're getting all the money. We, we just, we want you to be able to make that decision and get the money sooner. Otherwise, um, if you're changing your, your courses, you're going through ad drop during the ad drop period, um, you might not get as much money because we'll be holding it for you and we don't want to have that. So it's, it gets all dispersed to you. Um, so receiving your funds. Um, so we'll confirm the enrollments, then, then the funds get released to you. Um, there's, there's always two disbursements when it comes to, to student loans. You'll get a first, per, first disbursement at the start of your study period, which is 50%. And then you'll get a second disbursement in the midpoint of your study period. And that's usually for, for everyone here, it's generally January. Um, if you were doing a graduate program that had different start and end dates, it might be a little bit different. But uh, for undergrad, it's, it's always January. And as I said before, funds are released directly to your bank account. I'm, I'm quickly going to respond to a couple questions that I see in chat here uh, before I move forward. Um, uh, one question is, does everyone who applies um, get some sort of student aid or do some students get turned down? Um, you can be turned down. Um, the province of Alberta is actually the easiest province uh, in Canada to get a student loan. 
Um, a lot of provinces require parental income and that type of information. In Alberta, you don't. Um, every other province does. Um, so if you're an Alberta resident, your, your chances of getting a loan are, are quite high. Um, the only reasons I've heard people, individuals are turned down is either their income is too high. Um, so that means their resources outweigh their costs. So they have more, more money in the bank, more money in, in jobs or anything like that than, um, than, than what their costs are. So they, they have no need. Um, the other reason someone might be declined in Alberta is that um, they've defaulted on a loan previously. And then lastly, it could be their credit rating is way too low. Um, it, the credit rating doesn't impact that much, um, but, it, uh, but it is low, if it is low. One, one tip that I always wanna say is if, you're, if your resources for, for when you're applying for a loan are based on, on an assumption that you'll have a job while you study or an assumption that you'll maintain your job over the, the summer, um, I won't en enter that as a, as a resource. Never enter a resource that's an assumption. You don't know for sure if you're gonna have that job or not. Um, even if it is a, a job you've had over the last couple of years, things change, especially in, in the economy that we're dealing with right now. So I would not indicate it. Um, uh, question, does Alberta still offer partial remission of student loans after you graduate? No, um, they did that up until I think it was, I want to say 2011, so nine years ago, or it was nine or 10 years ago, they stopped doing that. They used to pretty much write off a portion of your loan um, after you graduate, but they no longer do that. Um, if a student lives with parents, can they apply for a student loan? Yes, of course. Um, living with your parents, there could be a cost associated with that as well. Um, usually when you're living at home, you're assessed uh, for a smaller dollar amount, but you definitely can. Um, do student loans funds get, get sent straight to the U of C or deposited to us? It's, they go directly to you. We don't get student loan funds at all uh, for all Canadian student loans. Um, I'll, a little bit further, I'll talk about U.S. loans, but that's only for U.S. Um, residents or U.S. citizens. So um, those ones come to us, but the rest um, go um, go to, go directly to you. So um, Alberta doesn't require parental income. I was under the impression there was. So parental income doesn't factor into your loan application at all. Only your personal. Alberta, when Alberta does the assessment, they don't use um parental income at all um, we're the only province that doesn't but in order for you to be eligible for federal grants funds um, they do require your parental uh, income um, but but if you're only looking at loans and you're looking at um, alberta grants then you don't have to um, you don't have to include your parental inf information uh, I'll just do, a there's still a few more questions, but I'll just do a couple more and then I'll have to move on. Um, do you have to apply the entire RSP funds towards the first year? My understanding is no. Um, I'll go into RESPs a little bit further. Um, it really depends on, on your RESP provider. Um, they'll indicate on, on what you can do with your RESP. So a, lot of, a lot of students that I know spread it over the, the four years. Um, um, a question is, if you have an RESP, do you have to use it before getting a loan? That my understanding is no too, and it's the same reason. You can spread uh, your RESP over multiple years, um, depending on, on the RESP provider. Um, my recommendation is either you or your, or your parents check in on, um, on how the disbursement from the RESP provider um, is, and then they'll be able to explain it a little bit better. Um, Question is, will I, will I be eligible for grants if I don't apply for a loan? You have to apply for financial aid. And in, in that, there's a loan and grants combined. So um, you don't have to take the loan. You can just take the grant. There are students who do that. Um, but um, yeah, but you, you need to apply for financial aid completely. Um, and, and you will be assessed for a loan and a grant, but you can choose just to take the grant. Um, last question here. So 
a student having a job can affect their chances of receiving a loan? Um, yes, because that's an income source. So if you have a job, you're making an income. So that means your resources are higher. Um, and if your resources are too high and, and your resources are higher than your costs, then you don't have a need. So as I said earlier, cost minus resources equals the need. So if your costs outweigh your resources, then you have a need. And that's when you'll be determined that you're eligible for a student loan um, and grant funding as well. So um, I would just be realistic when, when you're applying for the loan um, or, or applying for financial assistance is that you're, you're indicating exactly how much resources you will have and not based on, okay, I might have a job or I might not. And that's why I was kind of explaining it that way. So now I'm gonna to quickly touch on US loans. There probably aren't too many US loan borrowers, um, but if you are a dual citizen, like if you're a Canadian and US, um, this is an option for you as well. Um, University of Calgary is a Title IV eligible foreign school, which means that we can process US loans um, that are um, provided through um, FAFSA or free, free application for student uh, financial assistance and that's student financial assistance in the US. Um, if you are a U.S. student, um, you can you can apply for a U.S. loan as well. Um, if you're a first-time loan borrower, you'll have to complete entrance counseling, and you must submit your master promissory notes to us, and then complete a, a separate application that's that we directly house. Um, I know in my poll before, there's no U.S. students here, so I'm going to quickly go through this. Um, this is where federal student aid is for, for the US. It's just studentaid.gov. Um, so if you are a US student, um, this is an option for you as well. Um, the difference with Canadian and US funds is um, US gets, it has to be dispersed directly to the university um, with any Canadian loans, whether it be from Manitoba, Ontario, BC, Alberta, it'll all get directly um, released to you. So, uh, so one couple more questions before I go on. Um, okay, I'm gonna answer later on the next one. Um, so award scholarships and bursaries. I really hope that you all have, have applied for awards already. Um, you had the ability as of October 1st to start applying for, for award scholarships and bursaries. So I really, really hope you all have. Um, if you haven't, um, I'm just gonna quickly go over that and, and give you some, some pointers of some others that you might wanna be, um, might wanna be looking into as well. Um, so when I talk about undergraduate awards, um, that encompasses scholarships, bursaries, and awards. So scholarships, the selection is primarily based on academic merit. We also have bursaries where the selection is primarily based on financial need. And then we have awards where selection is based on multiple requirements. There was a question when we were still in webinar jam about um, scholarships needing a really high average above 90%. Um, that's not always the case. Um, we have award scholarships and bursaries that are specific to a certain faculty, specific to a certain program, specific to a student who's a non-smoker, specific to someone who's uh, from Calgary or from a certain school, specific to those who are from um, Bowness, um, um, certain, certain from, um, from rural communities, for those who are involved in Boys and Girls Club, for those who are involved in Ringette, for, for individuals who um, are from, from Northern Alberta, there's lots of those. So, um, so with, with uh, undergraduate awards, and, and primarily because most of the students here are entering undergrad, um, Last year we gave over 17 million, or sorry, this year we gave over 17 million dollars um, to undergraduate students. And for fall, um, we gave for entering students this last fall, um, we gave just over five million. Um, so if you do the math, um, the majority of awards go to entering students, um, or not the majority, but a, a good percentage, because if you think most undergraduate students have a four-year degree, 
um, that would mean that we'd have to give out over $20 million for it to be even. So um, we give more awards to entering students than anyone else. Um, last year, we had 3,358 um, award applications that were submitted. So you pretty much have a 50-50 chance if you apply that you'll actually get an award. Um, so I always recommend applying. Um, <clears throat> the high school award application is open. Uh, there's one application for multiple awards. It closes on March 1st. Um, the way you apply for it is you actually, I don't know if I have the descriptor on here. No, I don't. I'm going to go, no. Um, to apply for it, you do it through your MyU Calgary account. So if you've applied for admissions, you can go onto your MyU Calgary account. And then on the left-hand side, you click on My Financials. And then once you're in my financials, you scroll down just a little bit and there should be apply for undergraduate awards. From there, it'll show all applications um, that will be, um, you'll be eligible to apply for. Um, and um, yeah, the application, the application closes on March 1st. So you have a, a couple more weeks to be able to apply. Uh, once the application closes, um, it takes a little while for us to actually notify, but we notify all award recipients by the end of April at the absolute latest. Um, for any of you who applied for our prestige awards that, um, that the application closed December 1st, um, we will start notifying most likely by the end of this month um, and into March for, for those. Um, Um, I'll touch on external awards, then I'll ask, answer some of the questions that are on, on, on the chat here um, before I move forward. So just so you know, I, I was only touching uh, on internal awards, so awards that are administered here at the University of Calgary, but there are thousands of external awards that are available for groups across the world. Um, a good starting point for you to look is just go to ucalgary.ca. Um, slash awards. And then we have a section for external and government awards. From there, we have multiple links on different awards. Even in our searchable database, though, you can also search uh, for awards and, and put uh, a criteria as, as external and you'll be able to see those. Um, there's three key award providers that I want everyone to make note of. One for anyone Al Alberta residents is Alberta Student Aid. Um, for any student who's an Alberta resident. So if you're graduate, you're currently a high school student, you're gonna be graduating high school in Alberta. There's one scholarship that you'll have, you should always apply for. And um, the application will, will open in August. And that is the Alexander Rutherford Scholarship. If you have an average of 75% in grade 10, 11, or 12, um, in any of those years, you are, will automatically get the uh, Alexander Rutherford Scholarship. You just have to make sure that you apply for it. Um, so the majority of our students will, will be eligible for that who are Alberta residents. So, so just make note of that, the Alexander Rutherford and Alberta Student Aid. Um, another one to always look at is Universities Canada. Universities Canada is a foundation or uh, an organization that looks after um, a scholarship foundation and um, they have multiple. Um, they have the T T Toronto Dominion scholarships. They have the Tim Horton scholarships. Those are all high dollar value around $100,000. Um, there's multiple other ones. There's actually too many to list. Um, and then another great one that uh, is a great partner to the University of Calgary is, is the Calgary Foundation. Calgary Foundation has multiple as well, and it's they tend to be lean towards Calgary, but they can be students from anywhere. They usually you can attend multiple institutions, but it's a it's a good good thing to look for. So again, three three key uh, scholarship and award providers for Alberta residents. There's Alberta Student Aid. There's Universities Canada for everyone, even if you're an international student. Um, and then there's Calgary Foundation as well. So before I move on to RESPs, uh, there's a few questions um, that I just wanna answer about award scholarships and bursaries. Um, ba -ba -ba, I talked about how to apply. Um, unfortunately, Stephanie, I won't be touching on grad awards. Um, it's a completely different department that, that looks after grad awards, so I wouldn't be able to speak to it as well. Um, but uh, you can reach out to faculty of grad studies and they'll be able to, to help you with any of the awards. Um, 
Um, Ethan asked a little bit about um, the resource cost uh, calculation. Um, the fact that you'd be working very small hours, that wouldn't impact you that much. Um, it would, it would, you'd really just have to, to weigh out, okay, if your costs for, for your, your education are, are $20,000, but your, your income that you're going to have the entire time is only like a couple hundred dollars a month, then that definitely can't cover it. So, um, you should be fine. Um, Mona, I already talked about uh, how to apply for the awards. Um, Sam asked about how do we know what scholarship awards and bursaries the application is considered for. Um, it's a whole bunch of them. There's 200 plus that are available that are under um, that application. Um, if you go into your searchable database and you look for, for an award and it says the deadline to apply is March 1st, it's, it's under that. Um, it's hard to list the entire grouping. Um, Jeff asks, um, do you consider grade 12 high school marks, we consider whatever your admissions average is. So we rely on admissions to actually determine what your average is. Um, so it's it's whatever they have available at that time. Um, I talked about when the scholarship will be notified. Um, there is a list of scholarships. It's not a list, but it's a searchable database. So you can actually, if you don't put any keywords or if you don't filter or anything, you'll see the entire list of scholarships and awards. If you just go to uc, sorry, ucalgary.ca slash awards, and then pretty much in the top banner, there's a little button that says search for awards and you'll be able to find that. Um, can you, Marissa asks, can you apply for awards even if you have not been accepted in your program? Yes, you definitely can. Um, we recommend you apply early and apply. Um, the one thing is hopefully you've been uh, accepted by middle of April because that's when we start doing selections and we need an admissions average um, entered uh, by that time. So, um, um, Sophia asks about, um, in the high school award application utilities section, if your parents pay utilities, do I put zero? Yes. If it's not something that you pay yourself, put a zero in there. So um, when you're completing it. Um, do you extend special loans, grant scholarships to students who have children? Yes, we definitely do. We have scholarships that are specific to, to students who have dependents. So, so there's definitely those options. And when it comes to um, financial aid, um, if you have dependents, you can, you're eligible for more and there's more grant funding. So there's grant funding for um, students who have dependents. So um, that's, that's a good thing to know and it's a good question, thank you. Um, will you ever lose your scholarship after accepting it? Um, how do you know what the academic average is that you need to maintain? Um, after you've been selected for, for a scholarship, unless it's our president's admission scholarship, which you need a 95% average, um, the only way you'll lose it is if you don't enroll full time and, or if you change your program. If those don't change, then, then you're fine. Um, so when we do selection, that's the, we use the admissions average at that time and we don't look at your admissions average after that. Um, Um, you don't need to be registered by March. You do need to apply for admissions by March. Because um, if you don't apply for admissions, you would not be able to get access to the application. Um, if the average for grade 12s is higher than your average for grade 11 that was used for admissions. Um, so, it, it depends if if your grade 12 marks are in already. So we'll receive we'll receive diploma marks for for Alberta at the beginning of February, um, BC at the beginning of March, not the beginning of sorry middle of February. We get them next week uh, for Alberta, and then they'll be able to update your what your average is based on that. Um, we we use whatever highest average is in the system at the time. So in April when we start doing assessment, it'll be whatever the highest average is. Um, so if your highest if your highest average is now higher than your when you applied, 
the reevaluation happened. So it, just as I said, um, we're, we'll, we'll just get your first term transcripts next week. And then our, our admissions team will update all averages in the system. Ba -ba. Um, Joseph, yes, that's correct. Um, so um, if you want federal um, portion of the funding, you have to provide your parental income, but it won't be used to, to um, determine El Alberta student aid eligibility. Um, do you get the exact cost of select? Um, you, your student aid application won't open until June. So you'll know by then and you don't, and we will provide that for you. Uh, Melly, I, I can't answer that for, for you, and unfortunately. Um, Math 31 is used for, for, certain, um, for certain programs and, and not for others. Um, most only require Math 30-1, um, but if you're taking engineering, you'll, you'll need Math 31, and that'll be in your average. Um, question, um, I guess, I could have explained this a little bit better earlier. Um, to be registered full time, it means you need to have a 60% course load. So a full course load isn't, it's more than full time. Um, a full course load in our mind, as well as the mind of, of um, all provincial uh, student aid um, bodies is a 60% course load. And at the university, that'd be three courses per term. Um, most students take a full course load, which is five courses per term. But if you aren't taking a full course load, you can you can drop it down to three courses in the fall, three courses in the winter, and you'd be considered full time. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, RESPs. So if you were lucky enough and your parents were smart and decided to start saving for your education when you were a wee one, um, you can access your registered education savings plan or your RESP. So, in order to access your, your RESP funds, you'll need a confirmation of registration or enrollment verification. Unfortunately, we cannot provide this to you until you're actually registered in your courses. Um, so after you've applied, you've been admitted, you've accepted your offer of admissions here to the University of Calgary, and you've paid your $500 admissions deposit, then in May, you'll, you'll be able to access um, you'll be able to access registration for your courses. So, and then once you register for your courses in May, that's when we can provide um, the confirmation of registration or enrollment verification. This is important to make sure that your parents know because they're the, usually the ones that push you um, to, to, to complete this because they've been saving this money for you and it's important that you use it for your education. Um, based on which RESP pro provider, you have the process is different. So some of them, um, one like Education Matters is, is one, if you, they'll provide you your own form. Um, if, if they provide you a form, you'll need to complete your portion, scan and email it to resp at ucalgary.ca or bring it in person to enrollment services um, for completion once our office is open to the public again. Um, hopefully it is soon, but um, who knows with that. Um, if your pro provider does not pro have their own form, a confirmation of a registration letter, um, you're able to print it yourself through your MyU Calgary account. Um, it's also called an enrollment verification letter. Um, and that will, you'll just be able to provide that to your, your RESP provider to, and that will verify your status here. Um, as I said before, Students need to be enrolled in three or more courses um, to be considered full-time for that term. If you're enrolled in two or less, um, you're considered in part-time, unless you have accommodations through our accessibility services area. So, um, yeah, um, so that's really a lot of the funding options. I know it was really high level. You can always reach out to me um, if you have additional questions or need more detail, um, but, once you actually have your funding in place and once you start being a student, it's really good to keep track of your money. Um, and we have a program here that's at the University of Calgary that's called Money Smart. And we have multiple workshops and programs available with it. There's one-on-one um, -on -one budgeting, there's financial resources. 
Um, we just this last October, we uh, launched four uh, modules that you can complete. Um, we even have one on investing. So if you're wanting to invest your student loan, um, I'm not saying that's that's what I recommend, but I, I've heard of students doing that in the past. Um, there's all of these options are for you while you're a student here. Um, so, so it's a good thing to look into. Uh, money smarts, budgeting is huge. Um, I wish I had that when I was a student. Um, I'm a student loan borrower myself and, and uh, still paying it off, almost there though. Um, for more information, um, you can go to any of our websites at the university. So if you want more information on, on financial aid or student loans, you can go to ucalgary.ca slash student hyphen loans. Um, if you want more information about undergraduate awards, you can go to ucalgary.ca slash awards. Um, RESPA, RESP, um, the, the URL is a little bit longer, same with Money Smart. Um, just go to ucalgary.ca and, and search RESP and you'll get to that site. Um, same with Money Smart. Um, that's the easiest way I think to do it. It's hard to remember a, a huge URL. So um, that's what I recommend. Um, Next thing too is for, for all of those of you who have applied for admissions and been accepted, make sure you sign up and attend to you at U Calgary. Um, I am providing $10,000 in prizes for, for those who attend. Um, so make sure you, you attend you at U Calgary. It's really, it's really important because you'll, you'll learn a little bit more about your faculty. Um, you might be able to meet some, some students that you're, um, that you'll be classmates with um, even before your classes start. So um, remember, um, if you've applied and you've been admitted, you've already received an email advising you to, to register for UAU Calgary. It's only an hour of your time on, on a Saturday, so um, make sure that you register for that. Um, um, then lastly, before I get into the questions, um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Um, we have multiple different modalities to, for, for communications. Um, there's, there's chat with Rex. So if you just go to ucalgary.ca slash registrar, um, you'll be able to um, speak to Rex. He'll, he'll give you information um, that we have. You can also contact us via email. If you go to ucalgary.ca slash contact registrar, um, you'll go to our contact form and it'll be disseminated to us. Um, um, and then um, you can also call us 403-210-7625. Um, or when we're open again, you can come and, and talk to us in person. We're in McKimmy Tower. Uh, it's the tallest building on campus, uh, brand new building. Uh, and it's MT116.